Hey guys, my name is Kelly, and I have two teenage boys that I always ask to help around the house. I'm sure your parents ask you to do chores too, right? Empty the dishwasher, walk the dog, take out the trash. So what do you think of this? I asked my older son, Tucker, to mow the lawn, and he says no. Can you believe it? He said no to me. He's 19, so I can't really make him do it. But later, he must have felt guilty because he changed his mind and he did it anyway. Then I asked my younger son, Bray, to help with the lawn, do the trimming and weed the mulch beds. He happily says, yes, of course, mom, but he never did it. Which one of my two sons did what I wanted him to do? Well, of course, the answer is my older son, Tucker, the one who said no, but he was still obedient and he did the lawn. So which one are you? Are you a yes man, but don't follow through? Or do you roll your eyes and say no, but do it anyway? Jesus tells a similar story in the Bible. You'll read it in your small group today. The story is of two sons who are asked by their father to work in the vineyard. One son says no, but does it anyway. The other says yes, but never does it. Jesus told this story to religious leaders and then he asked them, which son did the right thing? And of course they answer correctly, the one who said no, but was ultimately obedient, he did the right thing. It doesn't matter how agreeable or happy you are when you say yes to a chore, it only matters if you follow through, right? We've been talking about setting boundaries, when to say no and when to say yes. Today in the last week of this message series, I want to encourage you to say yes to God, yes to your faith, and maybe even yes when your parents ask you to help out. I know that you want to say yes to doing good. I know that because all humans want that. We all want to be good people. We all want to love others well, but wanting to love others well and actually doing it are two different things. Promised obedience isn't obedience. If you promise something and never do it, then it's just a broken promise. Have you ever experienced unfulfilled promises from others? How did that make you feel? Feels like crap, right? So how do we say yes to God and yes to loving others? How do we know when to say yes to the good stuff? One way that we will know when to say yes to God and yes to the good stuff is by remembering who we are. Remember who you are and you'll know what to do. Who are you? That's a question that only you can answer and you'll spend some time answering it in small group today. But here's what I know about you. You are loved and therefore you want to give love. You are chosen by God and you belong to his family and therefore you enjoy helping others feel chosen and like they belong. You are holy. You were created by love and for love. You are forgiven, which means that you want to forgive others. And you are called, which means that you want to say yes when God calls you to be obedient. You are someone who wants to say yes to the good stuff and no to the things that drag you down. You want to be good. You want to love and care for others. And you can do that with God's help. As we've talked about boundaries in this series, we've talked a lot about saying no. That's the basis of good boundaries, being able to distinguish between right and wrong. Most of you do that pretty well. Knowing the difference between what's good and bad for you, that's fairly straightforward. But how about trying to tell the difference between a good choice and what's actually the best choice? How do you know how to give your best yes? First, let's just say this, there is no such thing as a perfect decision. Every time you say yes to something, there are automatically expectations. And with expectations, there's a chance for stress, disagreement, disappointment. Just realize that there's no perfect decision and no perfect result. You can release yourself from that pressure. Now, to finish out this message and this series, let's talk about how to set those boundaries and give your best yes with God's help. Here are three things to ask yourself. What is my desire? Have an honest conversation with God about what you want and even more important, why you want it. For example, if I'm deciding whether to go to a party where I know there's going to be drinking and maybe some bad decision making, I need to think about why I wanna go. What's my motivation? To be included? To see that cute boy? This is a moment to step outside of yourself and make sure you understand your desires because not all desires are good for us. The second question to ask yourself is, what is wise? If you asked someone who is wise, your small group leader, an older, more mature sibling, or the parent of a friend that you really respect, what would they say? 
What does wisdom tell you to do? And then the final question to ask yourself when you're trying to decide between good and bad or your best yes is, am I ready for the consequences? If I drink, if I gossip, if I smoke, if I badmouth my best friend, if I exclude someone, what are the consequences? Well, I might get caught, I might get grounded, I might lose a friend. Are you willing to deal with those consequences? If not, then you might wanna rethink that yes. So, what is my desire? What is the wise decision? And am I ready for the consequences? And also, think back to who you are. You're loved, you're forgiven, you're holy. Once you go through these three questions and remember who you are, you are ready to make a decision that is your best yes.